Now, this is one of those weird occasions, for me at least, where I was going to see a movie that has an amazing cast, but every time I went to the movies in the last few months, I never ever saw a single trailer for this movie. So I kind of went into this movie completely blind, only I was excited about seeing it based on the cast. I didn't read reviews, it did get a wide release, and out of curiosity I've now really seen, because of this amazing cast, Before I Go to Sleep. Now this film, if I was going to explain to somebody really quick, I would say just imagine if that 2004 Adam Sandler movie called Fifty First Dates was a psychological thriller and then 10 years later in 2014 it was now given a sequel. That's how I would initially explain the plot of Before I Go to Sleep because Nicole Kibben plays a woman that every time she goes to bed the next day she's forgotten everything because of an accident years ago she's forgetting for every day is pretty much new she forgets everything you know she goes throughout her day she does a bunch of things with her husband and then she goes to sleep wakes up the next day and she doesn't know who she is and everything there's pictures and notes all along the wall the houses and so she's trying to figure out who she is in this movie Nicole Kidman's character her character's husband is played by Colin Firth so this is like the second movie they've made together this year they had Railway, Railway Man and now they have Before I Go to Sleep. She's also visited, or uh, she gets calls, and she also corresponds and visits with a doctor who's played by Mark Strong. And this movie is actually based on a book, but I've never read that book, never heard about that book, so my review is only based on the movie itself. And um, so that's the gist of the story. She's trying to figure out who she is, who, if this, if this guy is really her husband, who's this doctor that's contacting her, and... Uh, what is going on in her past? Does she have a family? Does she have a kid? Does she have friends? She's kind of stuck in this house. Her husband goes to work every day and she's pretty much stuck. She's trying to just figure out... She's been like this for a while, but in this short, short period of time, this two-week period, she's trying to figure out what, 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 what happened. Why, why is she in this situation? Why does she lose her mind every day? And so that's the gist of the movie. How was it? Well, I didn't have any expectations because, honestly, I didn't know what I was getting into. I didn't read the plot, I just knew the title, the stars of the movie, and that's all I really knew. I, I you know, there was nothing to uh, anticipate. So, as I was watching, I was like, okay, I really like the way this movie looks. I like the atmosphere this movie creates. It feels, yeah, it's a psychological thriller. There are some elements of horror, but not like jump scares or anything, but it just feels like, this. like, who is, is this, is she with somebody that she's known her whole life or is this someone that just known her for a short period of time we're always wondering as she's wondering if she's trying to figure out what's going on as things are laid out and mysteries are unfolding in front of our eyes as they're unfolding in front of her eyes and then she has to kind of use this camera phone not camera phone but the actual camera video camera to record herself so it's kind of using some elements from you know 50 first dates which was a comedy and there's other films like that you know groundhog day where a guy had to experience everything day for day for day and then we got memento is probably the memento is probably the the best example of this kind of weird genre where people have lost their minds and they have to try and figure out things now this film was not up there with really any of those movies i think those films whether they're comedies or dramas are definitely the best of their category this film actually was good for a while. I was really enjoying it. And Nicole Kidman's great. She's great in the film. Colin Firth is great. And Mark Strong is good. He doesn't really get to do much in this movie. He comes in every once in a while. It's really the Nicole Kidman and Colin Firth show. And mainly the Nicole Kidman show. But, you know, she's really good in the movie. And, and, she, and I was really interested in her character. I started to care about the character. Even though as the movie was going along, it did feel more predictable. I felt like I was seeing the ending coming really quick and I feel like some people who see this movie might see the ending coming once the movie starts. You know, they might be like, oh, now I know, okay, I just knew that already. Of course I knew that already, you know. But for me, it was, there was a, a likability to the character, the main character. I wanted her to find herself. I wanted her to see if the situation she was in was actually the real situation she's been in for the last 20 years or so. And uh, so the mystery actually held my attention throughout this film. Now when it got to the end and there's that final revelation and everything, all the answers, all the questions are now answered, I was like, oh, okay, alright, whatever. You know, I didn't really have that excitement or motivation as I was watching the, the first two acts. I think the final act, it does fall apart now. I don't know how true it is to the actual novel. If you've read the novel and you've seen the movie, 
how do they compare? Are they the same thing? Are they completely different? I'd be really curious if you've, you know, let me know in the comment box below. For me, I thought this was a just a little better than okay kind of movie. For a while, I thought it was a solid film. And then when it got to the final act, and the sad thing about it is I think this movie is only 90 minutes, and I think if it would have had maybe two hours or maybe an hour, a two and a half hours to really stretch it out to get us to really dip deep into this story, as, as a, probably a novel would do, I, I think this would have been more compelling and not so preposterous near the very end. It did feel a little like, uh, what? I don't, wait, what? then how do those other things match? I, I don't know, whatever, it's okay. But because of the strong acting and the first two acts uh, were very, very compelling and the movie looks good. The music, I'll tell you right now, the music, this musical score that's throughout this film is my favorite part of the whole movie. That's what I love the most about the movie. But I felt like, I like Nicole Kidman and Colin Firth. They're great actors, they were good in the movie. And the movie is just uh, a little better than, okay. And I'm gonna give, before I go to sleep, I'm gonna give it a solid, Two and a half stars out of four. I'm Movie Man Chat. Please like, comment, subscribe to my channel. I'm also on Twitter and I'm on Facebook. And please go to WeLiveFilm.com and subscribe right here on YouTube to We Live Film. Also go to Long Beach Acting and Film Association right here on Facebook and Twitter. Please also go to MoviePile.com and if you've enjoyed this video movie review, please click right here, subscribe to my channel. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you've seen Before I Go to Sleep, if you've read the book. Again, i like to be curious if anybody uh, enjoyed this movie maybe more than I did or, or enjoyed it less than I did. I, I'd really like to know. In the meantime, have a great day, a wonderful night, and a wonderful life, and I will talk to you in my next movie review. Bye, everyone, and peace be with you, my friends.